Hi, this is Simon with Trade and Perform Coaching, uh, doing the trade review for uh, hopefully a very happy Halloween, uh, October 31st, 2013, and uh, the uh, market uh, looks like it had plenty of tricks and treats for everyone involved. So um, so let's go over a couple of uh, easy concepts to start with um, on the zones, right? So first of all, the zones by themselves are an edge, right? I want to try to place my trades in that location. Now, sometimes I'm looking for an additional edge, a bigger edge. I might want to see if I can get the second or third bounce in, but just blindly, right? I know that with a good rotation, I can usually take my zones and make money. That's the entire basis of my trading, okay? So if we'll look this morning, right, my game plan that I sent out to my coaching clients was I wanted to stay away from the open, right? I wanted to look for good rotations up and down and that I was willing to take both sides of the trade. So let's see what that would have looked like, right? So we open here, we kind of swish back and forth. This usually racks up when you get this kind of trading activity right here into a lot of losses for a lot of people. If you look, um, if you gave it this first 10 minutes to kind of clear out of the zone and see which direction it was going to go, we rotated from 1756 all the way up to 1762. Now, it's not a huge rotation. But it's a hell of a lot better than shorting right out, right out of the gate and getting chopped up, getting stopped, right? And it's right into the white zone. What does the white zone represent? For me, it represents where buyers are in control or where sellers are in control. Buyers were in control above the white zone, and sellers were in control below the white zone. I expect the first time in to find responsive sellers into a zone with good... Um, with a good rotation into it. And that's exactly what we got. We gave you a little bit of heat behind the zone, not much, right? And then let's talk about appropriate stops. If you're gonna put the stop right at the back of the zone, you can expect to get stopped out a lot. I can just tell you that from my own data. It requires an appropriate stop for most of my trades, that's anywhere from two to three points behind the zone. Uh, you have to make a determination as to what works best for you, and I would encourage you to learn how to take stats and build a trade plan so that you know that for a fact so you're not guessing at it or taking a stab at it it's exactly what I go through when I'm coaching clients how do you learn which trade needs what stop and how do we scale appropriately and then how do we increase trade size because all of us are in this to make a lot of money no one's in this to make 5% annualized return if you are dude stop killing yourself just go trade in uh, an exchange traded fund and uh, hell I even think the oil ETF pays an 8% dividend uh, make it easy on yourself um, so we got a beautiful rotation into this zone. We rejected out and we rotated all the way down from a, vent, uh, a high of near 1762 all the way down to 1752, right? That's a fat rotation. Look at that. Again, if you had nothing else and you just took the front of the zone, right? You took some heat, no question about it. But you got a beautiful rotation from 1753, uh, 50 almost uh, well initially to 1755 and then we took a little bit of a dip back but notice appropriate stop right 1751.50 is the back of the zone uh, we're looking at less than a two point stop here kept you in the trade and you rotated up eventually for I mean my gosh 10 points and how much better can you get than 10 points up I mean that's guys you can't do better than that I mean, that's all there is to it um, I didn't get all 10 points. I can tell you that on the trade I took. I did not get all 10 points. I wish I had. I didn't stay with the trade long enough. Okay? But I did do very well in here. Secondly, the majority of the easy trades are before 11 a.m. Central Time, 12 o'clock New York, right? The majority of them are. Why? Look how much more directional move we get versus all this crap all the way through the afternoon. And then we got this rip down here. Now, my understanding is that this was a news-generated sell-off, right? Um, but no matter, this is rare at the end of the day. Look at the majority of the end of the days, we get this right here, right? And it's been that way every day. Look at that. We got a rip here, but look at the chop up into the last couple of minutes, right? All the easy trades, all the range, all the speed come before 12 o'clock. If you're having difficulty making money, consider focusing the majority of your trades at the beginning. Now, also keep in mind when you're reading on Twitter, Oh, I killed it in the last hour, or I did this in the last hour, or, you know, I made money over lunch, or look how easy that was, right? So th it's not a question of whether they're making money on any one particular day. It's a question of day in, day out, are they making money? And the answer to that question, just so you know, is the majority of traders are losing money. It's a fact. 
the uh, I forget who did the study. I can go dig it up if you want to hit me on Twitter and you really want to know. I'll go dig up who did the study, but it was paid for, I believe, by the CME. And uh, it turned out that out of 100 futures trading accounts within 12 months of being open were, uh, were closed, right? And of those, 50% of those that were closed were completely blown out, meaning there was no money left to withdraw. They were just blown up, okay? So there's a ton of people on Twitter. Uh, and the majority, I've got a, a friend named Ben. He's a fantastic trader. Same thing with Kevin. These guys are great traders. And the majority of uh, the guys that I coach that are good traders, right? And they don't tweet a damn thing. You want to know why? They really like keeping their money. And I got to tell you, the only reason why I do this is uh, it was basically a challenge for my wife to try to help out other traders. And uh, I'm not even really sure how long I'll continue to do it, quite frankly. It's a lot of work, and it's a pain in the butt, and it takes away from focus. Um, and probably net over time, it's cost me money. Uh, but I do enjoy getting traders from struggling to profitable. It's very rewarding, and my wife is right. I do not give back very much relative to what I take. So that is uh, why I'm doing this. So uh, long story short, look, you got a beautiful rotation. By the way, you had plenty of tick divergence in here um, to pick a good, tra good trade off to the uh, long side. And there was even tick divergence right in here. If you go back and look at your tick bar, you'll see tick divergence here. I didn't have a zone here. Um, I'm pretty confident I nailed this area right here, but um, I could have had another zone, I suppose, right here at 1764, and I chose not to put it in. And, and that's cool. There's just a lot of space. When you get, um, you know, when you get into the middle of these zones, um, it can get really choppy. And I figured if we were able to stretch all the way back in here, that we had a good chance of running up into initial resistance. And given the strength of the market, I want to give short, uh, long stretches to the bulls before I try to take uh, short entries. So therefore, I, I simply just did not put a zone here uh, you could have I just simply chose not to and uh, and I'm all right with that that's cool sometimes uh, you know leaning towards the conservative side of where to take a trade entry is okay um, and perhaps some of y'all saw I kind of got into a little uh, pissing match with someone over uh, stock twits over whether uh, you know my comments so I made a comment here that uh, bears had gotten uh, burnt and so let's look at that comment and see if that was true okay so if someone was an absolute genius, right, shorted here and said, I'm going to hit the ball out of the park. This thing's going to roll over, right? If you look, if they just took one ES contract here, they have $500 right here, okay? If they didn't take any of that off the table, not a penny, and they held all the way through, by the time you're up here, you're at 1764. You are down from your best entry at least 100 bucks at least a hundred bucks at that point right um, guys who shorted all in this right and didn't cover quickly on these dips they're down here bears got buried and the truth of the matter is the truth of the matter is the majority of traders are not taking their shorts here and covering here the majority of traders who are losing money are taking longs here thinking we're gonna break out and they're taking shorts here and getting smoked if you're a guy who's shorting up here and getting long down here you're not you don't need help unless you're still losing money in which case you just need a little bit of help right you just need to refine your trade entry and your money management skills perhaps right but you have the right idea it's the guys who are trying to trade momentum and all this and you know the guys who are getting burnt in this situation are the ones who are making a killing the last six weeks um, buying breakouts and they were getting paid and if you're still buying breakouts the last couple of days, you are getting smoked. Same thing with breakdowns, okay? And the majority of the time, the ES market trades like this, okay? This is the major vast majority of days. If you take 200 days, you're going to find the mass vast majority of them have some theme that looks like this. And if you're playing momentum in ES, you're asking to have your ass kicked. Uh, that's pretty straightforward. Um, and what the normal... Um, the normal behavior pattern is someone will go through a period of, of a market acting one way or another for example the breakout market they'll keep trading the breakout market they'll be making a ton of money they're celebrating they've increased their trade size they're millionaires but they will keep trading that that market right and then it'll switch and all of a sudden what was working before the breakout 
is kicking your ass severely. Now, vice versa. This is 80% of the time. At least by my numbers, this is 80% of the time. The issue with that is the 20% of the time that it doesn't work, you better be able to shift gears or protect your equity. And uh, you can, uh, I'll gladly refer you to anyone who, who uh, I coach. They can all tell you, we shifted gears weeks ago, right? And part of that shifting gears was we were not being aggressive on the short side. And okay, so are we gonna miss a couple of shorts near the top? Absolutely, there's no question about it. Are we gonna have equity to trade tomorrow? You're damn straight. And this game is about growing your equity. And yeah, I'm, I don't know about anyone else. I'm not in this to make a 10% annualized return. I'm not even in it for a 40% annualized return. I am trying to double my account at least on an annual basis. Okay, and hopefully a lot more. And so you got to consider, you know, aggression. You can't just be totally aggressive all the time, right? You got to be able to identify your market and determine when you're aggressive. Also, the other thing to consider while you're trading through the day, if anyone's out there, right? You get tired. I missed the divergence up here. And um, I took a couple of longs in here and I actually nailed these okay. Um, and I got a couple scales off, but um, I was wrong on the trade. Now, I think this was news driven uh, and I'm all right with that, but I missed this tick divergence. Also, I missed the trap trade, right? We broke out right here, right? Here's the high. We broke out and then we failed back below, came back for a backside test and it was short. And um, I might have biased myself, but I really just think I, I was tired. I came back in. Um, I normally don't trade the last hour. The last hour is very, very hard. You'll rarely see me tweeting out uh, any kind of trade call at the end of the day. Okay. And uh, usually, for the most part, I'm not trading, but uh, I did and I survived this, but I could have easily had my ass handed to me. And I ended up taking a stop somewhere in here, which negated these two trades. And um, I wasted some time in effort trading. And that's what usually happens at the end of the day. It's hard to nail it. Um, I didn't realize that there was news out there. That makes it even worse. Um, and uh, I don't follow news. And the reason why I don't follow news is because I don't feel like I have an edge there. So, guys, um, that's all I have for today. Uh, I, I really hope there, there's, other, there's other things that are in here that are more advanced to help you fine-tune your trades, right? But this is my basic thinking. And again, I want to get back to, I want to leave you all with the basics on this. The zones themselves offer me superior trade location for a, usually what is a two point trade. Okay. And all you need is one or two trades a day to build an account. Don't over trade, um, take appropriate risk, measure your risk so you can grow your account and continue to move forward. And this is an extremely doable business, extremely doable. People do make a lot of money and they stay consistent. You gotta have an edge, you gotta have a strategy to exploit that edge, and then you gotta have the discipline to stick to the strategy. Anyways, everyone, you have a great day, and uh, we will uh, see you uh, bright and early in the morning for some more fun. See you guys. Bye bye.